Good morning. It's nice to have you with us. Uh, I, we're standing out in the hallway, Pastor Baker and I, and I said, I don't think we have to come in and help the congregation with the a cappella verse. They should be fine with it. And we came in, and you guys were doing just fine, and the organ was playing right along. So it sounded great. A couple of announcements and prayer requests, and then we'll go right into the service. Uh, we have a group of people we're praying for for baptismal birthdays. I'm not really sure whether we're praying end of July birthdays or beginning of August birthdays. Denise, is yours an, are you a, a Diane, are you a, a August baptismal birthday? Okay, so it probably is an August list then. All right, thank you. I knew that if, if there's anybody on that list I could ask and she'd know it'd be, it'd be Diane. So those are early August birthdays, uh, baptismal birthdays we're praying for. Uh, our Vacation Bible School just ended this last week and uh, was very successful. And praise God for that. I want to pray. Uh, pastor will be, Pastor uh, Spearbrecker, still uh, Pastor-elect Spearbrecker, will be ordained this next week. And so we want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, we start our confirmation experience this afternoon at 4 o'clock with the first of two orientations, so we start praying for the kids that will be attending confirmation with their parents, and then the school and the preschool are just a couple of weeks away from starting, so we want to keep them in our prayers. Um, happy anniversary, Linda. Yeah. Uh, Dan, who is our head elder, and his wife, Linda, are celebrating today their 40th wedding anniversary, and we include them in our prayers. Also, those uh, you see there that we're praying for for healing. Um, uh, Bob's uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, uh, all inoculated, uh, came down with COVID. So we want to keep them in our prayers, the Wheeler family. And then I just spoke with Grandpa uh, before I walked in here today, and uh, daughter and son-in-law are expecting a baby in New Zealand today. So uh, we'll keep them in our prayers as, as they uh, uh, anxiously await that moment. So those are our prayer requests. If you have other prayer requests, uh, we have now bulletins in your hand, or at least a form of bulletin that has that extended flap of paper. Would you fill out the side that records your attendance? It's perforated so you can tear it off. And then on the back side, any prayer requests that you have, it fill out whatever's appropriate there, tear it off, and then put it in the collection plate at the end of the service. If you didn't get a bulletin on your way in, I believe there are the same cards in the pews right in front of you so that you can grab one of those if you'd rather. But either way, fill one out and then put it in the collection plate at the end of the service if you would. I'd like to welcome you to our service today and to the celebration. If you would, please rise and let's begin our worship together. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God, our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Made heaven. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We now have a time for silent reflection. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Well, upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called an ordained servant of the word. Announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now join our voices together.
Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things that shall please you and you alone, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Exodus. Chapter 16. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the, in the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, 
and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And that evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin, fl thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4. Paul writes, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he descended on high, when he ascended on high, he led captives in his train and gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean? except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. For him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the sixth chapter. For the next several weeks, we'll be reading what is called in some circles the Sermon on the Plain, the second recorded sermon of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his meditation about bread, and particularly the bread of life. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum to search for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You're not looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then he asked them, what must we do to do the works God requires? And Jesus answered, The work of God is this, 
to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, Well, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate manna in the desert, as is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. It's my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we continue to sing. We pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. When we read three lessons on Sunday morning, typically two of them complement one another, and then the third is sort of a free text. It goes entirely different direction. But this morning, all three texts seem to push in the same direction. People who had lost their why. In the Old Testament lesson, the people of Israel knew who they were, chosen by God, taken out of captivity and being led now into the promised land. But along that journey, they lost their why why they were doing what they were doing at that point in their life. In the gospel lesson, the people that were searching for Jesus, who had ate in that miraculous feeding of 5,000, their fill, on their search for Jesus, lost their why. What's your why. There is so much of life and not nearly enough time to live it that it's important we know what our why is. 
She knew she was a gymnast. She knew she was one of the best gymnasts in the world. And the hopes of a nation rested on her shoulder. And before international audiences, she lost her why. And I watched the media rip her to shreds this week. Some that wanted to set her up as the poster child for mental health and the others that wanted to condemn her. And it just broke my heart because she was in a spot that the people of Israel found themselves, that those at the time of Jesus found themselves, and at various points in our life, we have found ourselves questioning our why, not being in the right mental space for the moment. What's your why? Because there are moments in which life dishes out a rather harsh experience. And it's in the middle of those difficult moments that we take a pause at times and question our why. Why am I a mom? a parent, a dad, an employer, an employee, a student. What's your why? In those moments when you're challenged to give an answer to the why in your life, it may have been an answer that you arrived at when questioning what you want to do when you grow up. Maybe when you begin to answer your why, you start with who? I'm a pharmacist, I'm a doctor, I'm a dentist, I'm a parent, I'm a pastor. And sometimes we define our why simply by our who we are. Maybe it's something that we earned in terms of a degree, or maybe it's a passion that we have on the side, an avocation. Maybe they're all of those things. But the challenge for our consideration, the challenge for the people of Israel, the challenge for those who sought after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the challenge for you and I, is what does God want us to be when we grow up? And how is that informing our why? Paul says in our text, there are callings that we recognize and we celebrate as God's people. People are called to be prophets and evangelists and apostles and pastors and teachers. We just celebrated the ordination of one called into that, Pastor Baker. But When Paul writes in his text today, he isn't talking to Sean, he isn't talking to Kevin, he's talking to every one of us. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. There is a calling, pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, prophet. The purpose of those callings is quite specific, to prepare God's people for works of service. So our why is always driven by that definition, to prepare God's people for works of service. But Paul says, live a life worthy of the calling that you have also received. You see, joining a church or claiming to be associated with a congregation doesn't make you a Christian any more than standing in your garage makes you a car. Think about that for a minute. But there is a great many people out there that think that some loose association with a Christian community somehow defines Christianity for us. Our Christianity is in two questions. What is your who and what is your why? You have been called. You have been set apart. You have been claimed in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And through faith and God's amazing love, you are called, redeemed, and sanctified. You have received a calling. You are called to faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah? You are. You are called to the forgiveness of all of your sins as a result of what was purchased and won for you on the cross of Calvary. You are called to grace and mercy. You are called to forgiveness, right? You are also called into fellowship, into the community of God's elect, to gather with those who are called in faith and who are called to forgiveness. You are called to gather in that fellowship and to celebrate the oneness that is ours in Jesus Christ. And ultimately, we are called to hope of an inheritance that waits for us with all of the saints. Yes, you are called. That's who you are. You are called to grow in the knowledge of God. We talked about that last week. You are called to be strengthened in his power so that you can take his stand and resist the devil, all of his works and all of his ways. You are called to great endurance. You are called to patience. And you are called to joyfully give thanks in every circumstance of your life. For this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. So Paul says, live a life worthy of the calling that you have received. You see, knowing who you are drives the answer to why you do what you do in your life. And even though our who's may be different in some respects, our why's are all the same. And when we lose touch with our why, we find ourselves at that moment when we're starting to question most everything we do in our life. So to the question, who are you? God's redeemed will all say in unison, we are, we are called, we are called. Bathed in the blood of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, our names written in the book of life, we are his called. Israel was his called, and they lost touch with their why. Those miraculously fed lost touch with their why, and it became a definition of how much food they ate, not who they were fed by in their life. So let's begin by laying the foundation. We are his called, which helps us answer our why. We are his called so that we can live a worthy life, a life that's worthy of who we are, his called, and to live an abundant and full life in his grace and mercy. The life that is good and pleasing in God's sight. A life that makes atheists and agnostics and non-believers question their position and their convictions. A life that challenges them by the way we live it to wonder if they've maybe made a mistake in their dismissal of God and his love. Paul's words. I urge you. I can't encourage you enough, he'd write, to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. What he's talking about is a radically different lifestyle than the one that's mirrored for us everywhere we look. Our why is to a completely humble life. One that's willing to take the back seat rather than demand the first seat. The one that's willing to look out for the needs of others 
and to be cash, compassionate and concerned about those around us who are hurting and broken and not demand our needs and our wants ahead of all the other issues that are in front of us. You have been called to live a life worthy. And the life that's worthy is the completely humble life. It is the completely gentle life. It's a life that recognizes that the world around us is fractured. It is broken. It is hurting. And in many cases, it is in need of gentle behavior and touch. The completely gentle life is one that takes great care in managing God's creation and God's creatures in a way that demonstrates compassion and love and concern and fragility of the lives around us. You have been called to a completely humble life, a completely gentle life, to a life that's patient. And I know this whole COVID thing has stretched our patience in many different directions. And going into a restaurant or a place where service is offered, it is easy to become impatient. The lines are long. There aren't enough waitresses or waiters to get around. And we start looking at our clocks and we start becoming anxious for the moment. And we forget. We lose our why, folks. We have been called so that we can be living the patient life. The life that understands that everything is in God's good hands and everything will work out to the good of those who love him. So be patient. The victory is ours in Jesus Christ. Don't worry about tomorrow or what you'll eat or what you'll wear, Jesus says. He's got it under control. And because he's called us into relationship with him, he is inviting us to inform our why with the patient life the humble life, the gentle life, the bearing with one another life. There are people in your life that exhaust you. There are people that take every ounce of your energy at points in your life. You're called to the life that bears that, who struggles with that, who endures that experience. Because our Lord is willing to bear a cross on his shoulders and take it all the way to Calvary and to give his life for us and call us into a relationship with him which invites us to replicate at some lesser degree the bearing with one another life. You have been called to be gentle, to be patient, to be humble, to bear with one another in love, and you've been called to the life that is to make every effort to maintain a unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. This life fractures way too easily. Relationships fall apart way too quickly. And you and I have been called to a life to try to hold that all together the best we possibly can the gift of unity, the gift of relationship, the gift of community, and resist the devil's attempt to try to destroy it and fracture it and turn it into something God never intended to be. You and I are called to bring things together, to hold things together and invite people to apply grace and forgiveness in their life and to celebrate the bond that is purchased and won for us by the blood of Jesus and a unity of peace that is ours through the cross and through the empty tomb. You have been called. It's not an easy calling, but it's a calling unlike the world around you. You've been called to a different kind of life, a life of gentleness and humility, a life of patience and bearing with one another and striving to maintain the bond of peace and the unity that is ours in Jesus Christ. Welcome 
Welcome to the gospel life. Because it is, good Christians, the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. It is our public witness to a fractured and falling apart world. It is the calling and the lifestyle you and I have been invited into through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and it is powerful. That lifestyle is powerful. And those who witness it and those who experience it may be well left asking the question, why? And we can tell them that we have been called to the one life that really matters. The one life. The one Lord's life. The one Spirit's life. The one Father over us all life that has joined us together through one baptism, in one hope, and in one body. You have been called to an incredible life. The only life that lasts for eternity. This is that life, good Christians. The life that pagans need to see. And seeing it, see reflected the good deeds demonstrated in that life and ultimately not pat us on the back, but give God all the glory when he returns. You have been called to a uniquely different lifestyle, one in which causes the world around us to pause and ask the question for the hope is within us. And when asked to give the who and the why, we will say we are the called, and what we do is because of that calling and the love that is ours in Jesus Christ to live a life that's worthy of the calling and worthy of the one who has called you. Not because we are so worthy or that we are so much better, but because God is so good all the time. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And may the peace that passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in faith until life everlasting. Amen. This is the time of the service where we normally pass the plates and collect the offering. And at this time, I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you, Bethany, for all your support, your prayers. Uh, because of you, we're able to do amazing ministry here. Uh, we just finished a week of VBS where we had 90 children come who may not know who Jesus is, and they learned who Jesus was uh, this week. Um, so thank you for your gifts, your offerings, your tithes, and no matter which way you give, whether it's the, the offering baskets as you come in or as you ex exit the sanctuary, whether it's online or whether you text in to that number on the screen, I just want to say thank you. And so now we have a time of reflection upon the many blessings that God has given us as we listen to our offering song.
We now go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we thank you for the many gifts and blessings that you continue to provide for your people here at Bethany. We ask that our offerings that we have given back to you, that they may be used in a way that is pleasing in your sight. And we also pray that these gifts may be used to multiply and grow your ministry here and throughout the world so that more and more people may know why you came and know the life that you gave us through your son. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Dear Lord, you came and you called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. We join together with and celebrate with those who are remembering and recognizing the day that you gave them life at the font in baptism. We ask, Lord, that you continue to empower them by your spirit to live as you have called us to live and to share that life <clears throat> that you have given us with other people in their words and in their actions. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we, we lift up the many different ministries here at Bethany. We give thanksgiving this morning for another successful vacation Bible school where your name was proclaimed and shared with the many volunteers and children. We also lift up today our confirmation program as that begins, and we ask that you bless the children, the parents, and the teachers that all may go and grow in relationship with you and grow to have a deeper understanding of who you are. And Lord, it's, it's hard to believe it's already that time of year, but we pray again for our school and preschool as they begin to have meetings to plan and prepare uh, for the school year starting in a few weeks. And we ask, Lord, that through all these different ministries, that more and more people will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we also lift up uh, Vicar Nate, as he's getting ordained and installed to be a pastor soon. Bless the ministry that he is about to begin and lead him by your spirit to share your good news effectively with those who attend his new church and those in his new community. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Dear Lord, we, we live in a world, and as we live in this world, we're reminded of the brokenness that sin has caused. And we see this brokenness and sickness and disease. Lord, we pray that you pour out your peace upon those who need your healing. We especially lift up Brian, Marianne, Donna, Jean, Michael, Bob's grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and the Wheeler family, and all of those other individuals on our hearts and on our minds. Give them strength in their trials and difficulties and heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we also lift up Emily and Garth who are expecting a baby very soon. Relieve any anxious anticipation they have as they wait. And be with the doctors and nurses that are working with them and we pray that they will be able to meet and hold a healthy baby soon. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. And dear Lord, we also today give thanksgiving for Dan and Linda as they celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary. We pray that you continue to be in the center of their marriage and, and empower them each day to share the love that you have given us with each other. And we ask all of this in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. We now join our voices together as we sing.
please rise. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is he that right so to do. Together we sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. For this is a cup in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink of this often in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given it to death for all of your sins. And take and drink.
May this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ may it strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in our Savior's peace. Amen. Well, Bethany, hear the blessing of our Lord to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Thank you.